What is up guys, it is KikiZilla101 here yet again, and welcome back to Kiki and Coffee, the show where we casually talk about stuff and put in as minimal effort as possible while we drink coffee. So grab your coffee, tea, or other preferred beverage, and let's get straight into the video. Mmm. <sighs> Not using our Kiki and Coffee mug, or our KikiZilla mug today, but... Which is good. Um, there is KikiZilla101 uh, and Kiki and Coffee. Uh, merchandise in the link in the description. There's also a uh, link to my Patreon, which all my patrons get all of my videos early. So go ahead and check out those things. Just gonna s shamelessly plug my stuff. Anyways, <clears throat> as you guys saw in the title, um, today we're having a pretty fun topic, which is our first viewer suggested video. Um, this video was suggested by Dimetrodon32, and <clears throat> it's a very cool topic. Very cool topic. I'm actually really excited to get into this one and I'm really I want to give a big shout out to Dimetrodon32 for suggesting this video and I think it was a really cool um, top 10 that he requested which was the top 10 uh, my top 10 favorite Carnegie Carnegie figures uh, so this is my personal favorites this is not like the objective best um, so don't get that twisted but um, yeah I really want to thank him for that because I actually really enjoyed um, looking through all my Carnegie figures and never really thought of which ones were my favorites, but it was really fun to go back and dive through them again, and it was quite nostalgic because I've had most of my Carnegie figures my entire life. Um, excuse the birds chirping in the background, it's the morning, and you know, early bird gets the worm. So, <clears throat> let's start off with number 10. Number 10 is this 2001 Carnegie Dimetrodon. I actually really like this guy, mostly for the colors um, and the, the position. Um, I always thought this figure was really cool when I was little, and I still think it's really cool because it's actually held up pretty accurately, um, which is surprising because it actually really looks like it has a lot of skin on it rather than um, scales, which is a more accurate depiction of it, and also has, uh, it's not like dragging its belly on the floor, which is really cool, so it's, it was a quite, um, impressive figure for its time, and I really, I really enjoy this figure a lot, so that one's an easy 10th place for me. Um, coming in at number 9, we have the 1997 Baryonyx from Carnegie. Uh, this guy, I, I, just the pose, it's the pose is really cool, I like this guy, I've always loved this one. It has really cool colors too, um, I've, this was my, pretty much my only exposure to Baryonyx, um, as a younger kid, um, or my main exposure to Baryonyx, even though it was a really popular dinosaur. Um, you don't really see it in much um, pop culture depictions and stuff like that. We got to see it recently in uh, Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom, but that thing is an abomination and not a Baryonyx at all. Um, so yeah, this was pretty cool just to grow up with it, and I think it's a pretty cool figure that actually holds up quite well, I just even though it's pretty generic looking. <clears throat> Anyways, Moving on to number eight, this is a newer figure I got. I got this one back in like 2015, I think. Um, you can see the video on my channel. I'll link it in the top right corner right now, right up there. Um, it will be in the top right corner, uh, the video that I unboxed this guy in. I think it was like a 11 figure unboxing or something like that. I was trying to get my uh, a new Safari Gorgosaurus, the old wild one. Anyways, this is the feathered variant of this Overaptor, and I just think the colors are lovely. I think it's a very beautiful colors, and the featheration on it is beautiful. I, I love my feathered dinosaurs. And so the, the coloration and the um, sculpting of the feathers are really what brings this one to life for me, and why it makes it um, definitely an easy eighth place for me. Hey, Fuzznut. He didn't get his feet washed. He didn't get his feet washed? No, he's getting me all wet now. Hey, Loki. Hey, Loki. Guest appearance of Doge. Hi, Fuzznut. Go back and get your feet washed, Bubba. Bubba. Um, number seven is the Carnegie Tyrannosaurus um, from 1998, I believe. Yes. Um, and this was the 2006 over after, in case you're curious. Um, the uh, this figure is a classic. I mean, everybody who is uh, a dinosaur fan that collected dinosaur figures knows this figure as like the definitive Tyrannosaurus Rex figure um, for decades. I mean, this one really is an outstanding figure. They did an amazing job on it. I think it's objectively probably one of the best figures on this this list. But in terms of favorites. Not necessarily. Um, I think it's really great. I think it's really awesome, but the um, specifically the asymmetry of the face 
kind of bugs me a lot. Um, that's something that gets on my nerves a bit. Um, I don't, I don't really like how bad the asymmetry is on this guy's face. It's also quite a derpy face. Um, but also, it's just kind of a T-Rex, and I'm not just that, I'm not really a big fan of T-Rex to be honest. Um, and so it wasn't really uh, super exciting um, for me in particular. Uh, even though I do think the figure is really amazing. Um, it takes a very interesting T-Rex to uh, get me to, to like a T-Rex figure because there's just so many of them that they don't typically um, really interest me that much. But this one is definitely very good, very good indeed. The other figures on this list I just personally like better. Um, not that I'm saying that this one isn't better than them because I think this one's objectively one of the best Carnegie figures out there. It's very well done. Now, moving on to number six is the Quetzalcoatlus from 1997. Um, I loved playing with this thing when I was younger. It's just really fun to flap its wings, and uh, it's it's nice. It's just really bend, nice bendy material that you can really you know get it into a lot of different positions with. And I always loved Quetzalcoatlus when I was younger because I first fell in love with um, these this idea of big pterosaurs when I was really young, and I saw the Ornithochiris and uh, Walking with Dinosaurs. But I found out that that was just fabricated BS, and so that was not real. Um, but they did have Quetzalcoatlus inside of Walking with Dinosaurs. They just barely showed it, and they didn't highlight it as the actual uh, er, uh, pterosaur that was really big, uh, which that has been put into question a little bit more recently. But um, definitely a very cool figure. I just think it's very well sculpted and whatnot, and unfortunately this guy has been loved a lot, and he has lost both of his legs. <laughs> So um, that's that's fun. I wouldn't mind actually picking up a new version of this guy eventually, just to have a new one um, as a nice like little um, memorabilia piece, I guess. Um, now that we're halfway through the list, let's let's take a drink. Number five is probably a surprise. It is the 1996 Saltosaurus. This thing, I, I can't, I mean, it's pretty hard to describe, but for some reason I've always had a really soft spot for this figure. Um, this figure is really well done for one. I mean, objectively, it's incredibly well sculpted. It's got some really nice um, detail for the time, especially. I mean, really crisp stuff here. Um, and the pose isn't too bad. The colors aren't too bad either. They've got some nice colors. It's got a really adorable face and it's got a nice bendy material that was really fun to play with as a kid. Um, but really, I, I, oh, other than that, I mean, I can't really explain it. I think that it's just got a really good combination of a lot of good factors that really just makes me love this figure. It's also not a very heavily represented uh, species of dinosaur. Um, I really do kind of like Saltosaurus just because of this figure. I thought it was always really cool to see all these like little salt sprinkles on the back of it. Um, and yeah, it's just a really awesome figure, and I definitely um, really, really love this figure. It's definitely one of the very few Carnegie figures that I still love to look at on my shelf and I like to put up at the front. Most of my Carnegie figures, like half of my Carnegie collection is inside of a, um, is inside of a drawer now and not even on display on the shelf. Um, and the, the stuff that is up on there is stuff that I do kind of uh, want to show off, but most of them will probably end up getting cycled out eventually for newer stuff. Um, and only a handful are going to stay, and this is definitely one that's going to stay. I just love this figure so much that uh, for some reason it just really, it really captures my imagination. Um, now moving on to number four, some of you guys are going to be like, what? How come this one's number four? And that's the Carnegie Spinosaurus. Um, yeah, the Carnegie Spinosaurus is an amazing figure. I really love it. Um, and it was actually really hard to pick all of these top four here. It was it was actually quite difficult um, picking them between each other. But yeah, the Carnegie Spinosaurus is my number four spot, which isn't a bad spot when you really think about how many Carnegie figures there are. I mean, this is only of, I should mention that this list is only of figures that I own um, and not of figures that I don't own. So there are, you know, other contenders that could have been on this, this top ten list uh, if I owned them. But this 2008 Carnegie Spinosaurus is just really well done. It really captures life in it very well because the pose is amazing. And I love the, just, just 
I, I guess the scale, the, the scale it just really brings it to life here, and it also has uh, a bipedal stance which really makes me like it a lot because um, unfortunately we're not really getting too many of these bipedal spinosauruses anymore and seeing that the only evidence that we have towards a shorter legged or quadrupedal spinosaurus has now been put into question and is possibly completely dubious um, itself is you know bringing this reconstruction back to life in a not so ridiculous fashion so I like this I think it's cool anyways moving on to number three we have one that you guys probably would have guessed is in my top 10. The Carnegie Giganotosaurus. Yeah, and it's only number... Jesus Christ. Loki, really? <clears throat> um, Loki should just be called the terror of these this, this show. He's knocked over everything in all three of my countdowns now. Um, anyways, um, this Carnegie Giganotosaurus from 2007 is really cool. I love this figure a lot, and it was actually, I was originally going to put the Carnegie Spinosaurus above it, but I just couldn't bring myself to do it because just this head sculpt alone, just, I adore it. I mean, this this figure was one of my most excited figures, like, since ever. I was still collecting Godzilla stuff when I bought this figure, um, and I just really wanted a Giganotosaurus, because Giganotosaurus has always been one of my favorite dinosaurs, or at least, you know, for most of my life. When I was younger, um, like, under 10, most of the time I was uh, a really big fan of Dromaeosaurs, like Velociraptor in particular, and then eventually Utahraptor. Um, but uh, Giganotosaurus is awesome. And I love the colors on this guy. The combination of like the light blue with the light green and uh, the red crests is just a lovely combination. Unfortunately, I do think this is objectively um, not that great of a figure, if I'm being honest. I mean, it doesn't stand well, for one. Um, it doesn't... Uh, it doesn't have really realistic proportions. It has a lot of um, asymmetry going on. I think it's worse than both of the T-Rex and the um, uh, Spinosaurus, in my opinion, um, objectively. But I like it more, just because it's a Giganotosaurus. I love the colors, and I really like the head sculpt on the one side of it. So, yeah, number three spot there. <clears throat> All right. And number two is an, my newest Carnegie figure, which I got for Christmas, um, which is this uh, this Carnegie 2015 Feathered Velociraptor. And I love the colors on this guy. This guy is so cool. The colors are amazing on this. I've wanted this one for a long, long time, but I finally got around to it. I love this tail fan coloration. I think that's beautiful. Um, and I like the, the blue skin um, on the Raptor. I think that's very unique. The blue skin is very different and unique so that's that's for sure a really super interesting um figure and i think it's just really awesome in general i don't i don't see too many people giving it um uh, much praise in the carnegie world but i think it's uh, definitely one of the best objectively uh but it's also one of my favorites so um there's an easy second place now as with all of my um on a, uh, my top tens will you move move dojos hi coco it is Coco's birthday today, by the way. So, happy birthday, Coco. Let's get a bunch of comments in there. It is the 19th right now when I film this. You guys will probably see it on the 21st. But, um, yeah, on the 19th is Coco's birthday. Hey, Fuzzo. Stop, guys. All right, so with all my top 10 lists, we always have honorable mentions. Um, and I have four of them here that we'll show off really quickly. We have the 1996 Chronosaurus. This was one of my favorite figures when I was younger because I always loved the Lyopleurodon from Walking with Dinosaurs. I thought it was the coolest thing ever. And so this is the closest thing I could ever get to it. Um, and it was just a really cool figure to play around with in like the water and the bathtub and stuff. And it, it's just a really cool figure. Unfortunately, it dropped out of my top 10 list because now I have like the uh, newer Chronosaurus from Safari. And as I aged, I really realized how stupid this figure is. Uh, but I do want to mention it because I still do have a soft spot for it because it really did. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm nostalgic towards it, and it was, it's not, you know, a completely terrible figure, but it was pretty cool to have as a kid. But as you guys know, I like to remove nostalgia from my, um, uh, my top tens. I'm, I'm not a overly nostalgic person, and I think nostalgia kind of holds you back from, um, thinking logically about it. So, that's why it's not on this, this top ten list, because I honestly don't think that I like it that much anymore. Now, 
We have also the Velociraptor from 2002. This is a really cool Velociraptor. It was, like I said, when I was younger, I was a huge Dromaeosaur fan, and this guy had a really awesome coloration. And it, so this was like my definitive raptor toy when I was younger. I never had any like other cool raptors, and the colors were just awesome. It was a Velociraptor that was more accurate than the Jurassic Park ones. And it, uh, I had the, this really, uh, it, it was it was weird. I had these like, there was this one time where I pretended like it, I think it fell off my shoulder. I don't remember how it was originally started, but I wrapped him up with like tissues and made it look like he had a bunch of casts on, like he fell off a cliff, he had a black eye, and it was weird. And I think that's why it's in such good condition for how old it is, is because for like legit like six or seven years he just had like these casts sitting on him and I didn't move them at all it was it was weird it was definitely weird um, and it was kind of funny um, anyways another honorable mention is the Dinosuchus from 1995 I think it's very cool but I also think it's very generic it just looks kind of like a crocodilian it doesn't um, you know, it doesn't really speak too much Dinosuchus to me. I mean, you can really, if you really look at it, you can kind of see it in the head shape. But if Spartan needs to make a new Dinosuchus, that would be really awesome. And the last honorable mention is the Carnegie 1988 Brachiosaurus. And the reason I wanted to bring this guy up is because I've gained a lot more appreciation for it recently. Not that I really super like this figure in particular, but I really appreciate what Safari did with it because this is back when Safari was actually willing to make big figures like this. And I wish Safari would make them more. Um, maybe they think that nobody is going to buy them or something, but the uh, last one they did that was any of, of any significant size is um, the Brachiosaurus from the Carnegie collection. I think it was like 2012 or something. I forget what year it was. Um, but it was more recent recent um, than this one uh, but yeah it's it kind of it kind of sucks that these fi giant figures have just disappeared from the market completely I mean not even like collector anybody's making any of these big figures anymore and it's really sad and so I have a lot of appreciation for this figure in particular because this is back when Safari was willing to do that so bring back big figures Safari please um, now with all that out of the way it's time to move into our number one spot Number one spot. A lot of you are going to be surprised. Some of you won't. But it is. And I didn't even think this was number one. I knew I loved this figure, but I didn't think it was number one until I was looking through this list and I was like, yeah, this is number one. And that is the Carnegie Myasaur and Nest set from 1995. These are my favorite Carnegie figures of all time that I own. Um, I don't think that any Carnegie figures will derank them. Um, I really don't. If there's any figure that w would possibly hold the potential, it might be the Carnegie Carnotaurus, but it depends on how much I like that in person, if I ever eventually get it, uh, which I'd love to. These figures are awesome. I love this. This is back when Safari was doing sets and stuff, and I really hope that Safari makes a new Myasaurus set that's updated and it comes to the nest again my dream. That would be my dream come true right there. I really want Safari to do that again. That would be like the best thing ever. Um, but everything clicks with this. I mean, I love Myasaur. This is really what got me into Myasaur was this set and really opened up my imagination to it. It's just so awesome. We get two pieces with it. Uh, it's so detailed with all of like the eggshells and the uh, uh, plants in there. And the coloration of the Myasaur is awesome. I mean, yeah, it's just, this was really awesome to play around with as a kid because I could really imagine a scenario um, and have a more real aspect to these animals to play around with and imagine of them being more real animals and taking care of their young rather than just movie monsters like Jurassic Park. And you constantly probably hear me making jabs at Jurassic Park. That's because I really do think Jurassic Park is, you know, not that good for um, uh, representing dinosaurs. And I, I kind of resent it for that. Um, but that, that's just the case here. Um, I, I really love these animals, and that's the reason I love dinosaurs in the first place. Like I said before, I watched Jurassic Park before um, I watched Walking with Dinosaurs, but Walking with Dinosaurs is what got me into dinosaurs because it made them seem real. I was already into animals as it is, like I thought animals were the coolest thing ever, and then when I found out that uh, dinosaurs were real and I learned about them and Walking with Dinosaurs, that's when I fell in love with them, not because of Jurassic Park. Jurassic Park just seemed like a bunch of movie monsters to me when I was a kid, and that's being, me being honest. Um, and that, that really holds true today. Even though I really love Jurassic World, that's because as I, I matured, I was able to accept the movies for what they were um, and move on from that. Anyways, 
this is really awesome because it captures it captures in a snapshot the reason why I really love dinosaurs, and that's that they're real animals and they were living and they had uh, hearts and souls just like every other living animal on this planet. And this just captures it perfectly. And so that with that said, that is our top 10 favorite Carnegie um, figures list. And I do want to give a huge thank you to Dimetrodon32 because this list was actually a lot more fun to make than I thought it was going to be. Um, and it really brought, uh, it really enlightened me to a lot of the figures that I really liked. And I thought it was really fun to make. So I want to thank Dimetrodon32 for that suggestion. I have, uh, I think, two other suggestions from uh, viewers that I've taken down, and I will get around to those eventually. So if you have made a suggestion, just hold out and see. If, if I commented on your thing, I'm pretty sure uh, you'll know that I'm, I'm using your suggestion, at least eventually. Um, so yeah, if you guys have any suggestions, please leave them in the comments down below. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye-bye!